Can anyone else remember a time when we didn't have to describe our audio or home theater systems like part of a math problem? You know, the something point something point something point something whatever whatever. I think you know what I'm talking about. I think we probably have to go back to the 1950s with the advent of stereo. Before then, everything was mono, so a single speaker. But we didn't start talking about stereo as being my system is a two and your mono system was a one. And there were some early experiments with center channels, believe it or not, back in the early, early days of stereo. I think partially because a lot of the stereo effect was very left and right and no fill in the middle. So there were circuits and things that allowed you to derive sort of a center channel from the common information between the left and the right channel. And this was done actually very early. A lot of people don't, don't actually know that. But it has been around, and, and when that came about, nobody said, my system's a three, yours is a two, and buddy, your mono system is a one over there. If you're still completely confused, it's the nomenclature that we started using with the advent of home theater. And one of the first ones, um, in the earliest days of Dolby ProLogic, we had something called 5.1. The five meant that we had five speakers at or above ear level somewhere in the room, left, center, right, and two surround channels. So that was the five, and then the point one was your subwoofer. Now all of this made, you know, actually quite a bit of sense. So you could have a 5.2 system, so five main speakers and two subwoofers. You could have a 5.5 if you wanted to, it didn't matter. Then Dolby came up with an idea for essentially duplicating what was going on on the front of the stage with a left center right configuration and added a center rear surround. So now we had six point something, depending on how many subwoofers. That quickly then changed into rear or surround and back channels, which were, could be side rear channels, whatever. They came on many, many different names, but now we had 7.1 or 7.2, etc., etc. Still fairly easy to follow that. And then height information came along. Dolby Atmos now seems to think that they're, you know, keep adding decimals and another number to something that already confuses a lot of people. But hopefully with that quick description, it's not too confusing. So now we still may have a 7.1 system, which would be three front speakers and four rear surround channels. 0.1, let's say, the subwoofer. And now the height channels are after that information. So you may hear a 7.1.4, for instance. So that's still the 7.1 that we know, but we've got four height channels. And they could be either mounted in the ceiling, they can be a wedge uh, speakers that fire off the ceiling. There's a number of different configurations, but if you were not so confused by the 5.1, 7.2, whatever configuration, then hopefully that clears up why now we've added another point something. It's just for those height channels. So hopefully that clears it up. It is kind of weird though. I mean, do you remember a day where you didn't refer to, hey, my theater system is 5.1 or whatever? A lot of this was the marketing might of Dolby uh, and DTS, maybe to a lesser extent. But it also came about because, you know, there was this groundswell of people getting into home theater. It was the cool thing. And still, to this day, I'll talk to people who say, uh, what do you mean when you're asking me what, what, what is your configuration of your home theater system? And I'll say, well, is it something like 7.2? Well, what's that? So obviously some people don't know, and hopefully that clears it up. Simple topic today but I'll be interested in your comments and thank you as always for watching.